So the next stage will just be talking about um, some products. Uh, so I won't get heavily buried in this because it's very difficult in a very short session to get a full understanding of the, the product knowledge uh, at Crown Casino or we have bartenders and take them through pretty much three months of product knowledge and they'll come out of their bar uh, once every two weeks and they would spend two hours in a training session and we would talk about those categories of uh, beverages that are served in the bar. So we won't spend much time on the very, very basics, but we'll talk about um, you know, the non-alcoholic beverages. So every bar has soda water, which is just carbonated water. Um, basically, it's flavorless. Uh, every bar has tonic water. That's the go-to um, additive for gin. The gin and tonic is a supremely um, popular drink in Australia and all over the world. You will have orange juice. You'll have pineapple juice. We all know what they are. Um, They'll basically be different packages. You'll have Coca-Cola, of course. Uh, you'll have this odd product called bitters. Um, so those that have never experienced bitters or a bitters lime and soda or bitters lime and lemonade, um, then it's a very popular drink. Uh, bitters does actually have alcohol in it that's considered if it's a bitters lime and soda or a bitters lime and lemonade. Um, this is an Australian bitter, so a newer one, and a very, very good one, I highly recommend. But the Angostura bitters is one from uh, the West Indies, and it's the global phenomenon called Angostura bitters. This one's a, a local orange bitters that I personally love in my home bar. Um, but it's aromatic bitters, so it's gentian, cinnamon, vanillas, all those roots and barks and all there are macerated. So it's very highly concentrated. So when a bartender uses um, bitters in their lemon lime bitters. They basically just use about five drops. So it just lines the glass. Okay. So that's how much uh, bitters. A lot of people say you put the bitters in first, you put it in last, you put it in the middle. Um, good question. Um, a bitters lime and soda. Let's quickly see what happens um, with one. This is a highball glass. We'll come back to a highball glass. Basically, all soft drinks and a lot of built cocktails are all built over ice. Okay, um, the one good thing we need to do to serve a high quality beverage, make sure your glass is clean. So you're looking at it, sometimes it goes through the washer and there's a big lipstick mark on the end. You just put that back in the sink, work that out later. You need to get back to your customer and not keep them waiting. Grab a fresh glass, look at it. And your ice needs to be making sure that it's not diluted. So we can't see any you know, water particles. So as most bars will have drainage. This ice vessel is an ice bucket. So it's not used in commercial bars, but it will have drainage. So that as the ice is melting, it'll, it'll just drain out. But just in case, as a bartender, you just always do your checklists. Clean glass, fresh ice. Okay. Now, in building a drink, you actually use three quarters full of ice. Uh, part of that reason is that the drinks are at room temperature and the palate really is asking for these drinks to be served chill. In fact, the quicker that the liquid that's room temperature will be brought to the temperature of the ice is done by having the glass almost full of ice. You only have one or two cubes in there, you'll actually create dilution in your drink because there's not enough ice in there to bring the room temperature liquid to the temperature of the ice. So more ice is a better drink. There are some people that will say, hold the ice, which means no ice. Holding the ice is zero, zilch, nada. No ice at all. Hold it. Uh, and then some people, especially Aussies, want their rum and coke. Cube of ice, mate, or just, just a touch of ice, mate. A touch of ice is like one cube, depending, of course, on the size of the cube. Um, a bit of lime and uh, soda. I don't think we have to. So, do you want to grab some soda, Nes? The... We'll just pretend this is, because it's for the exercise of what happens with bitters. Um, this is not Angostura bitters, so it won't frame up as much, but basically, you put your, your soda, this is tonic, in fact, it's just the exercise of uh, seeing what you do. You put your bitters in, which is five to six drops. When I said that was alcohol, most people are assuming it's a non alcoholic drink. You don't have to get fussed because it's only two mils out of five. Five drops creates two mils. So no one is going to get intoxicated and, and 
be drinking an alcoholic beverage on, on five drops. It's a flavoring. It's highly concentrated alcohol, but you're only using a couple of drops. Uh, basically, for me, because I'm sort of, my straw goes in now, my garnish uh, goes in now. We'll talk about using fingers later. Um, it's, a, it's a lemon. Um, basically, the reality is the bars will be keeping, bar teams are keeping their hands clean, and just because it's a fast paced environment, they'll just be putting um, their fruit in the drink as they mix. That is no problem at all, but there are other bars and supervisors will say you must use your tongs. That's fine as well. So when in Rome, you do as, do as the Romans. So your supervisor wants you to use tongs when you put lemon in there, you have to use your tongs. Um, now the lime, we have some lime pool over here. I'm just going to shake that because it's a very organic um, one from France. So it hasn't used to be used before. Or oh, we've got some lime already opened up here. This is a free pourer. I'll change this up. And with, uh, if it's not a spirit or liqueur, you can free pour. Now, because it's a thick cordial, it's quite heavy in sugar, so we need about 10 mils. So that's how much lime good. The, the straw and the ice will stir that up. So we won't go for a soft drink. The bitters will already be culling it, not culling it. To give you an example of how the bitters lime would be colouring it. I'll use some of my strawberry syrup. Yeah. And that would actually, the bitters would be those five drops. And that's the type of colouring you would get. And then you would serve that drink. If it was a cocktail, such as a, um, a Harvey Warbanger, a Cooper Libra, before you put the straw in there, you would be building a cocktail. You'd be putting your spoon and this has got a spiral, and then you would be you would be bringing up the spirit. In this case of a mojito or a bloody mary, uh, a rum or a vodka, and you'll be bringing it up that way. So you'd be mixing up that lime, mixing up some mint juice, um, some sugar syrup, so that it's all mixed as one. So that the mint or the sugar or the lime juice is not sitting at the bottom. Then you would put your straw. Um, we're going to have mint later on, but you know, this is just this is technique. This is not making your bitters lime and lemon. Because, so you actually just pat your mint just to bring out all the aromas. I can just smell that beautiful mint right now, and let that sit on the ice. Just let it sit there, and that would be the way you would build a cocktail. There you go, Nancy. That's non-alcoholic, apart from a little bit of bitters. Thank you.